Nelson Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They enjoy good times together. And like so many of us, they enjoy their good times over again in pictures. Now, in the automatic age of photography, you can take beautiful movies automatically. This is Kodak's new Brownie automatic movie camera. With it, you can shoot movies in bright sunlight or in deep shade like this and get correct exposure without a single adjustment. You never even think about the light because a built-in electric eye light meter adjusts your camera for you and gives you the right exposure automatically. We're a mighty lucky family to have so many fine movies of our good times together. And now that you can take your movies automatically with this new Brownie camera, I'm sure you'll want to get started right away. See the Brownie automatic movie camera at your dealers this week. It costs $74.50 or as little as $7.50 down. It's new from Kodak in the automatic age of photography. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. Hiya, Dave. Oh, hi, Mr. Pierce. I haven't seen you in a long time. Well, I've been kind of busy with school and then working in Mr. Dobbs' law office in my spare time. Oh, well, that's great. So who's that? Well, that's Tony Cantini. He's with the circus, one of the flying Cantinis. Oh, yeah, I think I've read about him. Uh, Tony, he's a nice guy, Dave. Tony, this is Dave Nelson. Tony How Cantini. Do, hi, Tony. Looking forward to seeing you in the circus. Thank you. Are uh, you a flyer or a catcher? I'm a catcher. Uh, did you ever try? No, I'm afraid not. Well, come on over here. I'll show you how it's done. Okay, thanks. To get a little rosin, so your hands don't scratch. I imagine it takes quite a while to get the hang of it. No, I don't think you'll have much trouble. You look like you're pretty well coordinated. Now, the catcher's job is to hang from the bar by his legs and catch the flyer as he swings over. I should think he'd pull you right off the bar. No, he would if you just hung by your knees, but you wrap your legs around the cables. It's called getting into a lock. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, I see what you mean. It doesn't look too tough. Can I try? Sure, go ahead. That's fine, Dave. Is that all there is to it? Well, not exactly. The catcher has to get into his lock while he's swinging. That's a little tougher. Here, give me a swing. Just put your hands here, then wrap your legs around. Yeah, I see what you mean. Watch your legs around, lady. A little practice and you'll have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tony, you wanted me to remind you when it was 11 o'clock. Oh, thanks, Mr. Pierce. Well, it's nice meeting you, Dave. Uh, nice meeting you, Tony. Thanks for the instruction. That's okay. Uh, say, why don't you drop down to the circus this afternoon and watch us practice? Oh, okay, thanks a lot. See you down there. Morning. 
Oh, hi, Dave. My name is... All the research material is here on your desk. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I wonder if you could do me a favor. What's that? Well, would it be all right if I took the books home with me and worked on them there? I'd kind of like to go to the circus this afternoon. Oh, I'll make a deal with you. I haven't been able to get hold of a process server. So you can go down to the circus if you'll serve this summons for me. It's over there on the desk. Okay, Mr. Dobson, it's a deal. Oh, thank you. See you Monday. Goodbye, Mr. Dobson. Bye. Have a nice game. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Dobson. Well, I guess I better get going. Oh, David. Don't forget the summons. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, would you put it in my pocket for me? Thanks a lot. Uh, by the way, I've never served a summons before. What am I supposed to do? Oh, there's really nothing to it. You just hand it to the person and run for your life. <laughs> oh, hi, Dave. You're just in time. Hi, Mom. Pop. Oh, hi, Dave. I thought you were going to work down in the office this afternoon. Well, I was, but I changed my plans. I'm going to work at home when I get back from the circus. Circus? Yeah, I met this fellow, Tony Cantini, at the gym. He's a trapeze artist. Invited me to come down and watch him work out this afternoon. Oh. What about Mr. Dobson? Was it okay with him? I mean, he's out playing golf. He gave me the afternoon off, but I have to serve a summons for him. <laughs> I hope your Blue Cross is paid up. <laughs> Don't they have regular process servers to do that? Well, yeah, but there weren't any available, and I happened to walk in the office at the wrong time. Uh, who are you supposed to serve? Gee, I didn't look. Holy smokes! What's the matter? Is it for me? Well, no, it's for Roberto Cantini. No wonder Mr. Dobson said it was okay for me to go to the circus. Was this Cantini the fellow you met? Well, no, but it must be a relative of his. Gee, he's such a nice guy, too. What did he do? Why are you serving him the summons? Oh, I don't know. Well, doesn't it say there? Oh, yeah, I suppose it does, but I'm not sure it'd be ethical for me to read it. Oh, what do you think, Pop? No, I, I agree with you, Dave. I don't think you should read it unless you were told to. Well, I don't think you should serve it. Well, I have to, Mom. I, I promised Mr. Dobson. Gee, this is going to be awful embarrassing. Tony's such a nice guy. Well, sometimes you, you just have to do unpleasant things, Dave, if it's your job. Well, better get started. Well, what about your lunch? Well, I don't feel very hungry, Mom. Uh, Dave, uh, you're forgetting the summons. Oh, my God. Thanks. I'm looking for Tony Canteen. Do you know where he is? He was in there practicing a minute ago. You a friend of his? Oh, yeah, sort of. Go right in. You can't miss him. Oh, thanks a lot. Hey, Dave. Oh, hi, Tony. Hi. I was hoping you'd come down. We were just practicing. Oh, well, see, don't let me interrupt you. No. Would you like to look around? Oh, yeah, thanks. That'll be fine. Dave, this is my brother, Jack. Uh, David Nelson. Oh, hi, Jack. Nice to meet you. Hello, David. Uh, you don't have another brother named Roberto, do you? Roberto? <laughs> What's so funny? He's my dad. He owns this circus. No one ever calls him Roberto, though. Hey, Papa! Oh, come on, boys. There's a lot of work to do. Come on, Tony. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Oh! Papa, this is David Nelson. Oh, hello, David. Hello, Mr. Cantini. Glad to meet you. I'm glad to know you, too. But please, call me Papa. Everybody else does. Yes, sir. Uh, Papa. Oh, and I think there's somebody else here who would like to meet you, David. I think so, too. Rosita. Yes, Papa. This is David Nelson. And this is my daughter, Rosita. Oh, uh, hi. Hi, Dave. Well, are you going to see the show? Uh, yes, sir. I hope so. Oh, fine. And how many are there in your family? Uh, four of us. My mother and father and my brother and myself. Oh, very good. I'll leave four passes for you at the ticket wagon tomorrow night. Oh, gee, you don't have to do that. Oh, please. It will be my pleasure. And if there's anything else I could do for you, you just uh, ask for Papa Cantini, all right? Papa, maybe David would like to watch his practice. Hey, it's a good idea. You like that? <laughs> That'll be great. All right, come on, kids. Let's go. Davis, we dedicate this trip to you. Thank you.
Ricky. Hmm? What would you do if you had to serve a summons? The first thing I'd do is get a good night's sleep, which neither one of us is going to get. This is awful. The Cantinis are about the nicest people I've ever met, the whole family. Hey, does Papa Cantini work in the trapeze act, too? Well, sure. One of the greatest flyers in the world. Well, then why don't you wait till he gets up on the trapeze, and when he swings across, you hand him the summons? But thanks a lot for the advice.
talk to you, Papa. What do you want to talk to me about? I don't know, but he says it's very important. I think you better go see. Okay. You're dreaming again. You and your ideas. Me? Yeah, you. And next time, swing a little higher. I almost missed you. <laughs> oh, good morning, Darb. Good morning, Oz. Here's your paper. I can tell by your nauseating good humor that you came over here to ask me for a favor. Okay, I'll get right to the point. Uh, may I sit down? Yeah, please do. It has come to my attention via the grapevine that you have four very good seats for the circus tonight. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Dave got them. Well, I understand the show's a sellout, you know, opening night and all that, so I thought you and Harriet might like to take Sally and me. Oh, well, yeah, except that uh, two of the tickets are for Dave and Rick. Gee, Oz, I, I've just got to see that show. Did I ever tell you I used to work in a circus? You did? Oh, sure. Years ago, of course. Uh, what did you do? All kinds of odd jobs. I used to mingle with the crowd. I worked the midway, mostly. Hi, Mr. Darby. Hi, Mr. Darby. Well, hi, fellas. Oh, you guys are up pretty early. Well, the fact is, we never went to sleep. Oh, what's the matter? Well, I've been worried about serving this summons. Gee, you should have served it yesterday, Dave. Well, I can understand you're being afraid of a thing like this. I remember I worked as a process server one summer. Well, it isn't a question of us being afraid to serve it. It's just that it's kind of an unpleasant thing to do. And especially when the man happens to be your friend. Well, he's more than a friend. He's a man with a beautiful daughter. Well, you didn't tell me anything about that, Dave. All you told me about was the tickets. Wait a second. Is this fellow with the circus? Oh, yeah. Papa Cantini. He owns it. Of the flying Cantinis? Yeah. You know him? Well, no, not personally, but I read all about him in the papers. Are you making him serve a summons on Papa Cantini? I'm not making him do anything. Uh, Mr. Dobson gave him the, the summons to serve, and, and it's Dave's job to serve it. Uh, I realize it's unpleasant, but sometimes we have to do those things. Oh, I know that, Pop. I can certainly sympathize with you, Dave. Well, I realize that. I can appreciate the spot you're in. Come on, David. Let's get going before you chicken out. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll see you later. Good luck, son. So long, Dave. Uh, bye, Mr. Darby. Oz, I am surprised at you. Look, Darb, it's not easy being a father, but, but the boy accepted a responsibility. Well, if you really wanted to help him, you'd serve this to Papa Cantini yourself. <laughs> Where'd you get that? I took it out of David's pocket when I said goodbye to him. So that's what you did at the circus. You were a pickpocket. Mingled with the crowd. I'll bet you did. I sold peanuts. <laughs> Dave! Dave! Fine thing now, I have to go all the way down here to give this back to him. What, what time is it? <laughs> it's time to give you back your what? <laughs> Are you going in or aren't you? Well, come on, will you? I want to get some sleep tonight. David, what a wonderful surprise. Uh, hi, Rosita. This is my brother, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Hi. Uh, are you related to the Cantinis? Yes, I am. She's Papa Cantini's daughter. Oh, gee, this makes your problem even tougher, huh? Well, do you have a problem, David? Well, uh, sort of. That's why I brought my brother along. What's this? Oh, I'd like you to meet my sister, Maria. This is David and Ricky Nelson. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, hi, Maria. Uh, would you girls excuse us for just a couple of minutes? We have a little business to transact. Oh, do you need some more tickets? Well, no, uh, nothing like that. Well, will we see you a little later? Sure. Well, don't forget now. Don't forget. Don't worry about that. Well, here goes. Hey, uh, don't you think it might be better if I stood back while you serve the summons? It might be less embarrassing. Uh, I thought you'd chicken out. That isn't the point. What are you doing? Well, I can't find a summons. 
I must have lost it. That's pretty clever. Where'd you throw it? In the ash can? Uh, that isn't funny. What am I going to tell Mr. Dobson? I, I don't think you'd have made a very good lawyer anyway, David. Uh, uh, Dave! Oh, Pop! I've been looking all over for you. I imagine this is what you want. Yeah, where'd you find it? Uh, well, it's kind of a long story. It must have fallen out of my pocket. Uh, no, I I'm afraid it didn't fall out of your pocket. It was picked out of your pocket. Picked? You mean like in pickpocket? Yeah, the, that's right. As I say, it's kind of a long story, but it seems I have this friend who used to pick peanuts. I mean, uh, <laughs> who, who pickpocketed at, at the circus. But anyway, here it is. Well, I guess I haven't got any more excuses. Uh, good luck, son. Oh, take the right over there. Ted wants to get some pictures of some of the acts. Oh, uh, pardon me. Uh, could you tell me where Papa Cantini is? Oh, yeah, he's right up there. Oh, uh, Papa? Oh, uh, Papa Cantini? Hello, Dave. I'll be down as soon as I get through. Uh, Dave? Uh, not yet. He's up there. Well, at least you got him cornered. Dave. Oh, Mr. Dobson. I called your house and your mother said you were down here. Oh, Mr. Oh, Nelson. Uh, how yes, are Mr. you? Dobson. Uh, Ricky? Oh, well, is that the summons? Uh, yes, sir. You mean you haven't served it yet? Oh, well, I was just going to. Uh, where is Mr. Cantini? Well, he's up on the rigging. And here he comes now. Well, here, I'll take that, Dave. I'll serve it myself. Oh, gee, I'm awful sorry. Oh, that's okay. It's something I should have done myself anyway. Uh, this is one summons I'm really going to enjoy serving. Smiling. <laughs> Mr. Roberto Cantini? Yes, I'm Roberto Cantini. Sometimes known as Papa Cantini? Yes, that is right. I have a little legal paper for you. For me? Why, well, this is a summons. What are you giving me this for? I suggest you read it and find out. Oh. Uh, Ralph Dobson, the party of the first part, hereby issues a summons to Papa Cantini and his family to have dinner with him Sunday night after the performance. <laughs> What's this? It's an invitation for dinner. I wanted to make it strictly legal. <laughs> Ralph Dobson. Ralph Dobson, of course. You remember me? <laughs> sure. You're the young fellow who always used to hang around and try to get me to put you in our act. <laughs> Dobson? Well, I didn't always want to be a lawyer. That's wonderful. And now, on behalf of the Cantini family, I accept your invitation. Only I want you to have dinner with us. Oh, no, no. You have dinner oh, with no, me. Ralph, Just I please. can settle this whole thing. How about everybody having dinner at our house? Yeah, that's the best idea yet. Oh, Papa Cantini, this is my father. Oh, how do you do, sir? How do you do, Papa Cantini? Brother Ricky. Oh, hello, Ricky. Well, why your house, Dave? Well, it's sort of a celebration. Well, what the, who's celebrating? The summons I didn't have to serve that turned out not to be a summons after all. Well, good for you, Dave. <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> that spaghetti sauce smells great, Mrs. Nelson. Thank you. Do you think that'd be enough? Oh, sure. After all, it's just Mr. Dobson and the cantinis and us. May I take this? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Dobson, I, I wanted to explain to you about that summons. I didn't know it wasn't a real summons, but even if it had been, I couldn't have served it. They're such nice people. I guess I'm not going to make a very good lawyer. On the contrary, David. You know, a lot of people think of lawyers as being cold, impersonal, and insensitive. But that's not necessarily true. A good lawyer must also be a good person. And kindness and consideration for the feelings of others is just as important as anything you can learn from textbooks. Yes, sir. No, David, I think you're going to be a real fine lawyer. A terrible process server, but a fine lawyer. <laughs> Pop, they're here. Hiya, Papa. Come on in. Hello, Ricky. This is Mama. Oh. How do you do? Mrs. Nelson, Mama Cantini. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Won't you come in? Nice to have you. My two daughters. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? My sons. Nice to see you, fellas. Come on in. My two nephews. Hello. Hi, fellas. Some of Mama's cousins. Oh, hi. I've grown up the whole family. I hope they don't mind. Listen, no, it is mine. Okay, we've got some bananas, too.
Technical advisors for the circus sequences were Dell and Babs Graham. David and Ricky used no doubles at any time. All their stunts were actually performed by David and Ricky themselves. The Nelson family is brought to you on film by Eastman Kodak Company. Kodak also presents The Ed Sullivan Show on another network. And when you travel, remember the quickest way to get your color slides or movies home to enjoy is to use Kodak prepaid processing mailers. Good night. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.